Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I hope happy and healthy and safe. So for those of you who are new here, hello, I'm Christina and I live in Mexico. I cross the border to go to work and while I'm in my car, I decide to have conversations about my life, about life in general, about being a mom, pretty much anything and everything that I can give my opinion on or share a story about. So with that being said, I hope you do subscribe for my peoples who are already subscribed. Hi guys and welcome back. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And this video is going to be about Mexico. Now I just kind of, I did a video about the line. So that should be coming up soon. This video, I wanted to talk about just living in general, living in here, what to expect, what you should do, you know, stuff like that. So to get started, my first thing is I don't want people to be scared. You know, I think a lot of people get hyped up about like the murders and the kidnappings and stuff like that. I mean, it happens, but it happens in the United States too. Like you can't, don't let that keep you away from here. I'm not saying Mexico is the best place ever. Everybody should be here. I'm not saying that, but if you need to be here or if you feel like being here is going to help you, you know, don't let the fact that it's not safe keep you away from that because as long as you take care of yourself and you don't do anything stupid, like you're going to be fine. I've been here for over six years and I've never had an issue. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys how to keep safe. So, you know, listen for that, but I just kind of want to get that out in the open. Like it's not as dangerous as everybody says it is. I feel like they make it way bigger than it needs to be. So a lot of the reasons why people live here is because it's cheaper. Okay. TJ borders California. And for any of you who have been to California, have lived in California or do live in California right now, you know, it is expensive as hell to live here. Okay. You're lucky to find a house under two grand. You really are. Like if you can find an apartment in like the 1800s, 1600s, it is possible. It is but it's very hard, okay? It's very hard to find. The majority of the apartments or houses for rent are over two, three grand, okay? Especially like the nicer houses, you're gonna be looking at paying three grand. And you know, for the mediocre, decent apartments, houses, you're gonna be looking at like 22, 23, 24, 2500. Okay, so that is why a lot of people will live here because the rent here is anywhere from 400 to a thousand dollars. You can get a really nice house here for a thousand bucks a month, you know, and you can get a decent house for, you know, six, $700. I pay $500 a month for my rent and I have a three bedroom, two story, all gated, you know, it's not like the newest house or the best house, but it gets the job done. It's not horrible and it's $500 a month. You know, you can't, you can't beat that. <laughs> so that is a big reason why a lot of people will live here because it's just cheaper. So with that being said, when you bring your furniture, if you're going to bring furniture in here, you're going to need to be, to be prepared to declare. You have to declare your items and you are going to have to pay money because you have to pay tax on importation. When you're bringing furniture into a new country, they charge you to import that furniture. So it's no longer American furniture. You're importing it to be Mexican furniture, okay? So you have to pay a tax on it. It's just, it's how it is. So depending on what you have and how much of it that you have will depend on how much you pay. There is a way around it. And that is if you go to the consulate of Mexico here in San Diego and you can apply for a moving pass which means you get one trip one trip to move your shit across and not have to pay anything and so if you go and do that then I think you you get away with it but if it's going to be like 
multiple times that you're crossing the border to like bring everything over, you're gonna have to pay. Or at least you're gonna, maybe you'll get the first trip free and then the other, other ones you have to pay. I've brought in a lot of stuff and I think the most I've paid like for furniture wise was like 20, 30, $30, $35, something like that. So, you know, it's not a whole bunch, but depending on what you have, you know, they do, I think it's like 16% of what it's worth and that's what they tax you on. And you know, here in Mexico, stuff isn't worth, you know, what it is in States. So the other thing I will say though, is that's just furniture. Okay. You can't bring tires in here. You can't bring a shit ton of clothes. So be careful with your clothes. I think moving they'll they'll be a little bit more lenient on clothes, but they will charge you a lot more if you have like a lot of clothes. So be careful with that shoes as well. Um, because a lot of people will sell clothes down here and, um, so they'll tax the shit out of you bringing them in. Um, what else can you bring? I think that's it. You just, you can't bring tires. You can have one spare tire. That's it. You cannot bring tires in here. Oh, you can't bring car, like large car parts either. I was trying to bring an engine in for like a truck that I got in States and oh my god I ended up having to pay under the table the officer which you guys normally sat SAT they will not let you bribe them okay they won't take bribes I was lucky I got this one girl and she was like willing to do it so I gave her three hundred dollars and she let me go because I had an engine in my car in my truck and I needed the engine. I, I just paid like $200 for it because I got it from pick apart where you go and get it yourself. You know, I had help. Okay. I didn't go and get it myself, but anyway, I, I needed the engine to get it. Like I needed it to get through and they were going to charge me like $600 to tax it. And I was like, I don't even, I don't have that. You know what I mean? This is all I have. So she decided to just pocket it herself, the 300 and then let me go. So that's exactly what happened. But I don't recommend offering to bribe officers because I will tell you the majority of the time you're going to get in trouble because they're, they don't take bribes like police do. Um, we'll get there. <laughs> so just be warned and be um, careful. And I will tell you a little trick. If you can hide stuff in your car to where they can't see it, especially like in your trunk, you should be okay. If you get the random red light where you have to be checked, you're fucked. <laughs> okay. But normally you just get the green light you go through and as long as they don't see a whole bunch of shit in your car you should be good but if your car is like packed to the top of shit they're gonna pull you over they're gonna want to look through it and they're gonna tax you for whatever you have like so just be prepared have some cash on you and you know be prepared to do that if you know you're gonna get stopped you have a whole bunch of stuff there's a, a part when you're pulling into mexico you can pull off to the side it'll say declare like it'll say it big declare go there it'll just help the process if you just go otherwise they're gonna stop you you're gonna have to wait for the officer it's I mean both ways are can be a long process but I'm telling you if you were just go straight to declare it'll be faster than trying to get through if you know you're gonna get stopped but if you don't know because like stuff's hidden pretty well and you think you might get away with it go for it I do it all the time <laughs> I do it all the time so once you get here I would recommend before moving, apparently finding a place. Uh, if not, I mean, you're gonna have to hotel it, of course. Um, I mean, hotels are pretty cheap here. I think you can find a hotel from anywhere, like the bad hotels, like $20 to $50 a night. So it's not horrible. I don't recommend the $20 hotels. I would definitely spend the 50 bucks, 50, $60 for the night to stay in a decent hotel. Most of them have like 24 hour surveillance and security, so you should be okay. But you know, just be, be aware of your surroundings. Okay. And that's kind of going to go with the whole safety thing, um, that I'll get into. But so when you find a house, if you're a U.S. citizen, you cannot buy. Sorry. If you get your dual citizenship and you become a citizen of Mexico, or I think even if you, no, they wouldn't let me buy even with a visa. So you, you have to be a citizen in order to buy. You can rent, you can rent here as a, as a US citizen. I think a lot of people do that. So renting is easy. 
Um, I mean, I hope you can speak a little bit of Spanish. Luckily, TJ has a lot of people that do speak English. So normally you'll find somebody who can, or if they don't speak Span speak English, they know somebody who does speak English, especially when, when they're in the real estate business, you know, they usually can speak a good enough amount of English to like get a house rented. So definitely go see the house. And one thing I will say is make sure it's gated. I feel like that's just gonna be way better. Don't don't pick a place where your car is gonna be parked on the side of the road. Pick a place where you're gonna be able to pull your car in and it's gonna be gated, like closed all the way through. A lot of them will have like the spikes on the top of the of the top of the gate or the barbed wire. Mine has barbed wire. The one before that had spikes. Like that's what you want because it is safer. People aren't gonna want to you know go in there to, to jack your stuff. And with your car being enclosed, it's gonna prevent people from putting shit in your car because people do that. Which is, again, one of the things over the safety that we're gonna go over. So definitely make sure when you're looking for a place that you're finding something that's secure. There are some like residential areas that have like actual, like either police or security that like monitor the entire place those are good places to go to too so you know just look for good well monitored well secure areas to move into especially if you're gonna have children with you especially so yeah and it's pretty much just the same you'll have a deposit you'll have um first month's rent and then they do especially if you're renting they'll ask you to for a reference. Reference isn't just somebody you know. They have to own property here in Tijuana. Own property. Okay. They can then, like, they're basically your co signer. They're basically saying if you don't pay your rent, they can go after this person's property to pay what you owe. Okay. So not a lot of people are going to do that for you, <laughs> especially if you don't know anybody here. So chances are you're going to have to pay a third deposit. Some people don't take. It at all like they have to have the person but a lot of people will be lenient on it and just ask for a third deposit so if you find a house that's six hundred dollars a month you're gonna pay six hundred deposit six hundred rent and six hundred for the third deposit for the like if you don't know anybody okay so it's eighteen hundred dollars to move in so just be prepared for that a lot of the times the water and the electricity will already be set up and that will stay in the owner's name. It's not gonna be changed into your name because you're renting. Okay, so you don't really have to worry about that. They either will give you like a paper that will be stuck into your house at some point. That's how you pay. Sometimes it's every month, sometimes it's every two months, or sometimes you have like a card and then you just go out to your like electric meter thing and you put the card on there and it'll tell you how much you owe and then those like kiosks at stores that you can go to and you'll put in your card and then you pay your bill that way otherwise like the paper ones you can go to like oxos or the actual um you know electric company those kiosks for the card you can also do it with your bill that has a barcode you scan the barcode you pay your bill um, they will shut your shit off like the day it's due so do not be late on your light they will shut your shit off and they don't care if you pay it they won't come out until they have time so even though you pay your if you got it shut off they might take two or three days to come turn it back on no joke no fucking joke if you see i remember there was a few times that happened to us and we would see like the cfe guys driving around i will go chase them and offer them 100 pesos to come turn on my shit right now and a lot of times they'll do it because they want the money you know so you know, money makes the world go around here in Mexico, man. Money makes the world go around. If you have money, you're good. You're golden. Like, you're 100. So, for sure, you know, make sure you always got a couple extra bucks in your pocket. Because you never know when you're going to use it. You're going to need to set up Wi-Fi if you want Wi-Fi. I don't recommend getting cable. You can. They do have, like, some decent cable. But the majority of it is going to be in Spanish. They do have some channels that you can change into English, but like I said, I just really don't think it's worth it. I would rather just have Wi-Fi and watch Netflix or like the online stuff. A lot of the apps that people watch though, like, um, what's that one? Not Netflix, but the other one, Hulu. Hulu doesn't work in Mexico. You can't watch it. 
I don't know why. You can't. You can't watch it in Mexico. They don't let you. So don't even bother downloading it. Um, also, like those individual TV apps, so like ABC, the CW, they don't let you watch shit in New Mexico either, which is fucking gay, let me tell you. But if you can get the show on Netflix, like you're good. The other thing with Netflix is we do get updates later. So the United States Netflix will update and then like a month later, the Mexico Netflix will update. So you'll notice like if you go to states, their Netflix will have stuff that you don't. And you're like, huh, it is different, you know? It's different, but it's whatever. I mean, it is a big deal. If you're not a TV person, then you probably don't give a fuck, but I just wanted to put that out there. So I think that's really it that you need to, um, you know, set up when you're moving in. You don't, they don't do insurance or anything like that. The other thing I will say is you're going to probably have to pay a maintenance fee, which is, you know, sometimes if you live in a big residential area, they have people that come and do like the yard, um, like the front yard or whatever. So you'll have to pay that. And then because of the security doors and then the people that parole the place, like all that you have to pay for and you pay for your trash they come and pick up your trash and all that usually it's between 100 and 200 pesos um, a month which is only five ten dollars so I mean it's not a whole bunch but you'll have to probably pay that a month as well to um, keep up your maintenance which is basically your trash to be honest that's basically what it is and then for air conditioning and heater and heating the majority of Mexican houses do not have heating and air conditioning they don't. They don't want to waste the money on something that they don't need. Okay. And I know that sounds crazy to some of you, but they don't, they don't need it. So a lot of the times your house will not have air conditioning or heating. Some places do. Okay. Because they're from, you know, America and they know that people want heating and air. So every once in a while, you'll find a house with a mini split. A mini split is like a small little machine that goes up on the roof. It does have like some air ducts stuff or whatever but if you find one with that you're good you know you have your air you have your heating whatever they also will do window acs those ones that like go in a window the swamp coolers or whatever so they have those too and you can also you're i mean if the, if the house doesn't come with one you're gonna have to buy one me i use one of those like big portable acs and then we just have like the hose part that goes out the window we have one upstairs and one downstairs so that's what we do and then for winter when it gets cold like we have little space heaters that we put in the bedrooms otherwise you know that's really it because it's just not necessary you know it's california it doesn't get that cold here it does get cold but with the space heaters like we're fine so yeah that's about it really <clears throat> so as far as the safety goes don't go out at two in the morning what do you need to go out at 2 in the morning for? It's not necessary. Don't. Don't go out at 2 a.m. Especially if you have to go, don't go by yourself. Like, that's just fucking dumb. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of shit that's going to get you in trouble. That's the kind of shit that's going to put you in a place where you should, probably shouldn't be. So, don't do it. I don't recommend it. Don't go downtown walking around at midnight, 1 a.m. because you want to go party. Don't do it. Those are the people that get kidnapped. Those are the people who get killed because they were walking on the street while a drive-by was happening and now you're dead. <laughs> don't do it. It's not... You don't need to be there. Stay, stay out of your... Stay out of business. Stay out of other people's business. Don't bother with other people. You know, don't buy drugs. If you're a drug addict, you're fucked. I mean, I... Don't owe anybody money. If you are, if you're a drug addict and you move here and you are using drugs, stay on point with your money because the day that you owe somebody money, it's not good for you. No, 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 no. And just be, just be safe. You know, don't leave your car unlocked. Don't, like I said, leave it in a enclosed area at all times. If you're running to a grocery store or something like, yeah, you should be fine. But I... I go from my house to the border. That's it. I've ran to a grocery store maybe once or twice. And there's a few times where I've done like swap meets and stuff like that. But the it's always being patrolled. It's a risk, you guys. You're risking, 
you know, something happening to your car. People will use magnets to put drugs underneath your car, especially if they see you're American and if you have American plates, they're automatically gonna assume that you've crossed the border. And they're automatically gonna assume that you're American and that you're gonna get across no problem. So they're gonna try and put drugs on your shit. I used to check underneath my car every morning because I couldn't get, I couldn't keep it unclosed. So if you can't keep your car unclosed, check underneath your car. Check underneath your car before you go to the freaking border, dude. Don't ever use valet. Do not ever use valet. Don't use it. Don't use it. Don't use valet. They give it to you like when you go to the casinos or sometimes if you go to like a really nice um, hotel or a really nice club, they'll have valet. Don't use it, okay? Go park your own fucking car. Go park your own car because they will stuff your shit with drugs. I'm not saying every single one, but why risk it? Why? Why? I know somebody who's sitting in jail right now serving 10 years because they went to a casino and used valet. The valet stuffed their car with a whole bunch of drugs and then they went to go home after the casino and guess what? They got busted for something they had no idea that was in their car. And they have no way of proving that. They have no way of proving that. So just don't, don't be stupid. Be smart with what you're doing. If you're gonna live here, live here, okay? If you wanna go out during the day to like, like I said, a swap meet or the grocery store or, you know, we have some nice parks and stuff. I mean, right now everything's closed because of COVID, but without that, you know, there is some fun stuff that you can do here. Cool. But I'm saying once I'd say like 10, 11, 12 hits, keep your ass inside, man. Keep your ass inside. If you're going out to like a bar or something with some friends, stay together, Uber, Uber it. Uber it. Don't go off walking in places. Stay in front of the club. Get in the car. Go home. You know, that's it. Stay together. Don't go by yourself. Don't be like, oh yeah, I'll meet you guys there. No. Stay together. It's harder to be taken in a group than if you're by yourself or two of you. So I just feel like that's, I feel like that's common sense. You know what I mean? Like, just don't, don't wander the streets at 3 a.m. by yourself. Like, <laughs> no. Um, you know, be careful with your kids. Don't let them. I mean, I know some moms and dads are like helicopter parents in the first place, which is it's kind of what you need to be here. You know what I mean? You can't just let your kid like wander around the store. You can't do that. Chances are you're not going to see them again. You have to keep them right next to you. You have to hold their hand. You have to keep your eye on them 24 seven because it, I mean, it happens. Yeah. People will take your kids here and then they'll hold them for ransom and then you'll probably never see them again. So don't risk it. And I know that's the part that scares you, but I'm telling you, if you're safe and you don't put yourself in those positions, you can live here just fine, normal. When I go, I, if I need to go grocery shopping, I go to States. If I need to go get clothes or whatever, I go to States. I go to Goodwill, I go to Walmart, I go to Ross. I go, that's where I go. Like I said, every once in a while, I have hit the swap meets here during the day and you can find some cool stuff and get some good deals, which, you know, is awesome. But I don't kick it here. This isn't where I go and hang out, you know? Like I said, if you're in a large group and you're Ubering it and you're just going from the club to the Uber to your house or to the border or whatever, like, cool, fine. You have your group of people, like, you should be fine. But other than that, I don't recommend it. So I think that's it for now. I think maybe in a, in a part two video, I'll go ahead and do like price points on different things. But I think I covered everything. Safety, bringing in your stuff, getting your house set up. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped anybody. Maybe somebody's, you know, looking to move to Mexico. So this is everywhere. This isn't just in TJ, okay? This is everywhere in Mexico. No matter where you're going, it's gonna be this way. So yeah. Like this video, share this video, subscribe, 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 and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enter my giveaway. Bye.